So here we have a three-dimensional question and the important things I just want to draw your attention to is that BCD, so that triangle that is highlighted in green, that tri and, and I know many people do struggle to see this, what we have here is BCD, so that's flat on the ground, and then we've got ABD, which is a triangle, and ADC, those are in the air. So you could think of BDC as a patch of grass, for example, and we've got some pole in the ground, so AD is a pole, and then AB is a piece of rope, and AC is a piece of rope, for example. So it's a three-dimensional question. So when they tell you, for example, that AD is a tree, sorry, here they've used the example of a tree, then what they're indirectly trying to tell you is that this is 90 degrees, right? Because a perfect tree would be 90 degrees with the ground. It's not going to be skew, right? And and yes, the other important thing, which I have mentioned, is that BCD is flat on the ground. So we've got three different triangles over here. So we've got that triangle over there, that triangle over there, and that triangle over there, which is flat on the ground. The goal of the question is to eventually find the length of BC. And so what I always tell students is, well, let's try start right in that triangle there. So that, so in that triangle DBC, we only have the 100 degree angle. That's all that we have. And so unfortunately, we do not have enough information to even start in that triangle. So what we do, so these questions are actually very easy if you think about it like this. We can only work in one triangle at a time and we only have three triangles to choose from. So we tried to work in the horizontal triangle, BDC, because obviously we would like to find BC because that's the point of the question. However, we saw that there's not enough information in that triangle. So what we then do is we use the other triangles that we have to try and add more information to the triangle that has BC in it. So for example, we could work in this triangle now, and let's see what we can get from that. Now what many students fail to realize is that that is a 90 degree triangle. So you can go back to the previous year trigonometry where we used things such as Sokotoa. And I've added videos on Sokotoa in the earlier parts of this chapter. So Sokotoa can be used for 90 degree triangles. So let's look at that blue triangle. We Which side would be the best one to find? Well, you could find AD or you could find BD. Which one is going to take us closer to the final goal of working out BC, which was this one over here. And remember, to work out BC, you would have to work in that bottom triangle. So we should try find BD, because BD will help us work in the bottom triangle eventually. So looking at that blue triangle, we have the length of 10, so we have the hypotenuse, because it's opposite the 90 degree. We have this 20 degree, and we would like to find BD, which is the adjacent side to that angle. So we're going to work with the adjacent and the hypotenuse, which is cos. So what we do is we say cos 20 is equal to the adjacent, which I'll just call it BD, over the hypotenuse, which is 10. Now to get BD by itself, we will times both sides by 10. What you do to the one side, you must do to the other. Why are we timesing by 10? So that those cancel. And so we end up with BD is equal to 10 cos 20. And so you go type that in on the calculator and it gives you an answer of 9.4 if you round up. So now that 9.4 is a length in this triangle over here as well. And so now that triangle has more information. However, we still don't have enough. We only have one angle and we only have one side. Now usually that is enough information if it's a 90 degree triangle, but to be able to use the sin or the cos rule, we need at least one other piece of information. So then what we can do is work in this triangle. And which side should we try find? Well, DC, right? Because DC will take us even closer, or it will give us more information in that green triangle. That 
purple triangle that I've highlighted is also a 90 degree and so we can use the normal Sokotoa. People often ask me, do you have to use Sokotoa in a 90 degree triangle? No, you don't. You can use the new sine and cos rule. It'll still work out. So in that purple triangle we have the hypotenuse and we have this 40 degree over here and we're looking for this length which is the adjacent. So once again we're going to use cos, so we'll say cos 40 is equal to the adjacent which is DC over the hypotenuse which is 9. We then times both sides by 9 and so that gives us DC as 6.89. Now we have quite a lot of information in this triangle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to draw that triangle out over here so we can have a better look at what we have. So we know that it's not a 90 degree triangle so we have to use either the cos rule or the sin rule. We should always start with the cos rule, I mean the sin rule, sorry, because it's easier to work with. And so the sin rule is all about opposites. Okay, so we have 100 degrees over here opposite to the side that we want which is BC. Then we have this 9.4 opposite to this angle over here, but we don't have that angle and we could call it y for example, but then we have two unknowns. Can you see that? We have x and y. This only works if we have one unknown. And so unfortunately the sin rule is not going to work. And so let's use the cos rule which goes like this. And so remember when we looked at the cos rule we said that c, or this one over here, is the side opposite the angle, side opposite the angle. These two, they are next to the angle, next to angle, and then C is the angle, that capital C. So let's go fill that in. Well the side, the angle we're going to be using is the 100 and the side opposite that, well that's x, so we'll say x squared, or we could call it bc squared if you want, equals to now the a squared and the b squared, those are the two sides that are next to the angle. So that'll be 9.4 squared plus 6.89 squared minus 2. Then the a, b will just be 9.4 times by the 6.89 times by the cos of the angle, which is 100. Then you just go type all of that in on your calculator as you see it. And so that gives you x squared is equal to 158.325. And then to get x alone, you would take the square root of that. And so we end up with a final value for x. So let me scroll down. So x is going to have a final value of 12.58. And remember, x is bc. So therefore, bc is going to be 12.58.